Let me start by saying thank you to our today's video sponsor, Geekbank. Geekbank is the place where I buy my electrical scooters, 3D printers, vacuum cleaners, and other consumer electronics. Due to the fact they have local warehouses, you can avoid import taxes and get really quick shipping. Today the printer retails for about 425 euros. For that price you could almost buy 3 3D printers, I guess? So naturally my questions were, first of all, is this printer worth it? Would I recommend this printer to my friends who are beginners at 3D printing? And I think looking at the print results will help us answer these questions. While our requirements for print quality is different, I think that some of these models, especially this woman body model, speak for themselves. This one is perfect because there are no seams at it, as it was printed in the ways mode. Nevertheless, with my other printers, I can't get consistently such good results. I would like to mention that this model has been built with the printer being completely stock. I just assembled the printer with the instructions that the manufacturer provided. They didn't do any PAD tuning, any upgrades, any adjustments or anything else of that kind because I wanted to see how good would the printer be for complete beginners. So if you are one of the beginners inside of the box you will find everything you need to assemble the printer and the assembly itself took me about 15 minutes or so and even without experience you can do it in 20. When you get your printer out of the box I recommend you first take a look at this 8 GB full size SD card because inside it there is a really good video of how to assemble your Creality Ender 3 S1 Pro. Alternatively there is also a paper version of manual that will help you to assemble the printer. It will not tell you however how to level the bed which you can find also in the video. Let's run down the printer and look at the key things here. So filament reel. I like the approach that it's on top and actually move and slide it around if you need to. And you can actually just take the handle out from that side and put it on the other side and I think that works just great. The filament sensor it stops the printer if you run out of filament. It's mounted in this very flexible way. Didn't cause me any troubles whatsoever. Then of course there is the LED light bar. You should be careful not to break it off. Don't try to lift your printer, hold it up here. 
but I really love the light it gives on my prints. I think it's it's really great addition because I don't need to add any extra LED lights to see my prints better and it's just how it should be. In the previous reviews people said there was a problem with the cables when you put the gantry up to the top position which is 270 millimeters. Well, I think these problems have been fixed because I didn't do any modifications whatsoever and as you can see there is enough of cables for it to reach 270 and even if I move the print head to the right side or the left side there is no problems with the cables whatsoever. The Creality Sprite Pro Extruder must be a highlight of this printer. It's compact, lightweight, it's made out of full metal, meaning you can print up to 300 degrees temperatures, meaning you can print basically all the materials that you want. It has a high precision metal gear and it makes sure that the filament feeding is very consistent and very reliable. And of course it has CR touch mounted on, so it can do automatic bed leveling for you making bed leveling just a blast. But it's also so easy to replace the filament. Push on the lever, take out the old filament, take the new filament, push it in. You can squeeze a little bit, even though it's a soft TPU, it's not too difficult to squeeze out. Alternatively, you can just use the LCD. We want, I don't know, five millimeters of the filament. PEI sheet is fantastic, it does the job super well. Normally I just lift it like this to take off the prints and that's enough to make them pop. I don't even take it off completely. Even the TPU and other flexible filaments are quite easy to remove. Easy peasy. And it provides this lovely surface, at least I like it very much. Of course if you need an even surface you can install sheet of glass and print on glass. After about 250 hours of continuous printing my PEI sheet stopped sticking and I couldn't get the great first layer. The solution for that is warm water and some dish soap. After washing the PEI sheet under hot water and some dish soap the problem was removed and my prints were sticking like this should again. On this Pikachu you can see two sh layer shift lines that happened because of my fault when I was making the time lapses. Same or similar thing happened with the elephant when I was making the time lapse. You see this little finger was pushing on the shutter release button and that resulted with this disastrous quality around the eye and on the trunk. I have reprinted the elephant again without using the time lapse and the result was much better at least around the eye and around the trunk but it had another issue as you can see around the head area and also on the entire body there happened a tiny layer shift so you can see much larger layer lines on the new elephant i knew something was off mechanically and probably because of pressing the button too hard the rollers became loose or generally after more than 300 hours of printing you need to do some maintenance. The happy ending to the story is that I had to only adjust the eccentric rollers a little bit and then I was able to print this grey koala which was unbelievably amazing. You got a love that you can adjust the belts just like this both on the X and on the Y axis. And you can control your printer with this nice LCD screen. The user interface is pretty simple and the touchscreen itself works pretty well. I rarely misclick anything. And last but not the least, I absolutely love the drawer because you can keep all your tools and if you don't need to create a mess around on your table. It's deep enough to even have larger tools in here. You can take it out if that makes it easier for you when you work on the printer and then you can just hide everything away. It's just really so cool. All in all it's a printer that you can assemble in 10 minutes and get high quality prints straight from the start. It doesn't need any upgrades, it has lights, it has fantastic direct drive extruder, it has a drawer to keep your mess away from you and it has the PEI sheet and everything you ever need to get nice good quality prints and if that's not what beginners need then I don't know what is. 
for me the printer has a great value i think because only the direct drive extruder costs around 110 euros today so more than some 3d printers themselves but the print quality simplicity of use and reliability of the printer is worth the extra payment in my opinion but you can let me know in the comments what you think is the printer worth the price or not the last thing to mention that you can also buy 1.6 or 5 watt laser model and turn your ender 3s1 pro into the laser engraver